to tell you about the time I was working at a tiny Starbucks back in London. Of course, I don't live there anymore, and it's for good reasons, as you're about to find out. It's an event that has honestly led me to have less faith in humanity and be very wary of every interaction with someone new. I had just started my freshman year at University of the Arts. I was studying photography and I was quite excited about it since I had always been a keen photographer. And I was excited to take it to the next step beyond Instagram. But like any bachelor, it costs a fortune. So I had to work somewhere while I studied. Starbucks was the obvious choice as I could have a flexible schedule and work part-time around my school hours. Plus, being a famous chain and everything, I figured it would be more reliable than a local cafe. I guess I was wrong. I am quite introverted, so I found it very nice when one or two people from the university engaged with me and made the first step towards friendship. I had just moved to the country and I didn't have any old friends in town either, so I definitely needed someone to hang out with. The first person to introduce herself to me was Claudie, who was a friendly, energetic girl who had just come from Jamaica to study fine arts. We would stay up late watching random stuff on YouTube to clear our minds after the busy school days. The second person to engage with me was Ted. I still get shivers down my spine whenever I say his name. He was in the same class as me, also studying photography. It was a big class though, and we wouldn't all take the same courses. I was minding my own business around the school campus when he inserted himself into my life. I was reading on a bench and he sat next to me and made some mundane comment about the weather. It was sunny and a pleasant day to be outside. I thought he was just being friendly, like one would assume. And since I still didn't have any friends except Claudie, I was happy that someone was talking to me. So we started talking about school and about our lives outside of school. He told me he came from a little island south of the country, but not much else. He wouldn't tell me his age or any details about his family. Instead, he had a long list of questions for me. What was it like back at home? Did I have any siblings? What did I like to eat? To be honest, I thought it was a little creepy at the time, but I guess I never imagined how much creepier it would get. That is why I didn't put an end to the conversation. In fact, I even went as far as telling him where I worked. That's the one thing I regret. I can't blame myself for his behavior, but I wish I were a bit wiser that sunny day. The next day, right after school hours, I was working at the tiny Starbucks. And guess who was inside waiting for me? That's right, he was already there. And he had probably been there all day not knowing what time I started my shift. I got a little awkward about it, saying something like, hey, what are you doing here? He just replied with a smooth voice, I came here to see you. Sure, that would have been a nice thing to hear from your boyfriend, but not from a near stranger. He was way too intense from the get-go. I said, okay, cool, which sounded very dumb in my head, but I literally didn't know what to respond to his creepiness. I just carried on with my job there and ignored him, hoping he would leave. He sat down on a sofa and sipped his coffee slowly while looking at me. Every now and then, he would look out the window, maybe to make it look like he wasn't completely crazy. I would try to catch very quick glimpses of him, to see if he was still there without making any eye contact. I felt my cheeks getting really hot, and at one point, I even burned myself with a customer's coffee. I just couldn't get my work done because of him. 20 really long minutes later, he got up and left. He whispered a bye-bye in my direction and I yelled bye back at him, only to feel super embarrassed right after. Why did I yell? Clearly, I wasn't myself around him. Then the pictures started. Remember he was studying photography as well? Being the creep that he was, he soon learned my schedule at Starbucks and would come by whenever I'd be working. It was horrible. When I saw him come in, I would act like I was really busy so I wouldn't have to talk to him. And because I'm the introverted type, I found it very hard to confront him and tell him to simply go away and stop bothering me. Anyway, during his third or so unsolicited visit, he pulled out his camera and pointed it my way. You've got to be kidding me, I thought out loud and spilled a drink. My work colleague noticed my reaction and asked me, what's wrong? Where do I even begin? 
I said, and I began explaining to her all the ways in which this guy was making me feel very uncomfortable. She then took the action that I couldn't take and walked up to him and told him under no circumstances was he to take photos of the coffee shop's employees. He didn't look at her. He looked straight at me, knowing I'd be looking at them. Then a really weird smile appeared on his face, the psycho type. Like, he wasn't at all bothered by my colleague's warning. In fact, he looked like he enjoyed it. He got up and left, all the while smiling at me. My heart was pounding, and I was thinking of all the horrible ways in which he could retaliate. I had no choice but to continue work in this worried state. However, now another staff member knew about him, so I felt slightly safer. If anything happened, I could ask her for help once more. But as it turned out, she couldn't help me. Because that weekend I was working the late shift and my colleague wasn't there. I had another workmate who knew nothing of this guy and I hadn't told him anything either because I was secretly hoping he would stop coming to see me. But of course he did and right before closing time too, like he actually had a plan this time. When I saw him walk through the front door with the same smile he'd left with last time, I froze. He walked straight to my counter and asked for two pumpkin spice lattes. I thought, okay, cool, maybe he has a date and he'll leave me alone. So I gave him the coffees and waited for him to leave, but he wouldn't leave. He says in the same smooth voice, one's for you. I could have been shy and quietly accepted the coffee, but I was very suspicious of him by now, so I knew better. I said, sorry, I don't actually drink coffee this late. You can offer it to Stanley though, and pointed to my colleague. Stanley came over and we both looked at Ted being very reticent of offering the drink to Stanley. Stanley and I looked at each other and silently agreed that Ted's behavior was off limits. We kicked him out with confidence. Stanley even grabbed the broomstick. And that night I called the police and told them how this creep followed me, took photos of me, and nearly got me to drink a spiked coffee. I don't know what happened to him after that because I never saw him again. Wherever he went, I hope he's not spiking anyone else's drink. Anyway, enjoy your college years, but beware of the creeps. I started going to Starbucks when I was 15 or 16, mostly because I was following the crowd I was with, but also because I was a fool for their chai latte. However, I was about to find out you can have a very negative experience inside a Starbucks too. So negative that as much as I love my chai lattes, I stopped going to Starbucks throughout the rest of my high school years. My friends were mostly my age, but often my older sister Nina would tag along with me after school. She was in college and the college was around the same area as my school. She was always friendly with my classmates and that proved to be a mistake. At one point, one of my classmates, Ryan, developed a thing for her. But Nina was engaged and of course she didn't want to cheat on her fiance with a guy four years younger than her. Ryan didn't care though. He kept complimenting my sister in exaggerated ways and he would touch her in ways that just weren't appropriate considering he knew she was engaged. Unfortunately, Nina's fiance wasn't around that much as he was a traveling dancer, always on tour. And my classmates weren't protective of Nina either, as they were. Well, they were 16 and this whole display just amused them. So that left me in charge of defending my sister because it seemed like nothing she would do mattered. Although I tried pushing Ryan out of my group or sneaking to Starbucks without him, somehow he would still find ways to tag along. Once, Nina and I were waiting in line when Ryan simply hopped on my sister's back and yelled, surprise! Ugh, so distasteful. Eventually, Nina stopped coming to Starbucks with us, and I felt sad about this. I liked it when she was a part of my group, and I didn't want to have to leave the group either. Bar this guy, everyone else was super nice and smart. But he was just something else. Over the next few days, Ryan started showing his anger towards me. He probably felt that I was responsible for pushing Nina away from him. He just couldn't see that she was not interested in him. So he decided he was going to get his revenge on me. One day after school, we did our usual Starbucks run when Ryan suggested he was going to get a round of coffee for everyone. 
He even ordered a chai latte for me, remembering my usual choice. What he didn't remember though was that I always ordered a soy one because I'm vegan. And because by now I had a suspicion as to what was happening, I kept a close eye on him when he picked up the drinks. Yep, he opened the lid to my chai latte and dropped something inside. I couldn't believe my eyes. I mean, I knew he was shady, but to go that far to get your revenge? He offered me the chai latte with a stupid smirk on his face. So I returned the smirk and said, no thanks, I think it's got regular milk in it. His face turned red, his eyes were bulging, and in the blink of an eye, he just spilled the latte all over my clothes. Needless to say, my other classmates were watching the show and couldn't believe what happened either. They immediately excluded Ryan from our group, and to be honest, I think he went on to exclude himself from school, as I never saw him in my class or down the hallways either. He was probably ashamed of how things escalated within just a month. Well, good riddance. It was late November, and I could barely stand the Christmas songs in the local Starbucks anymore. But I had to, because I was working there on the weekends to support my little sister. My parents were not exactly the most reliable family. Dad had left us years before, and rumor had it that he was in prison for some shady deals. And mom? Well, she had a drinking problem and a tendency to waste all her money on alcohol and gambling. But my sister and I were really close. From a very early age, we knew we had to stick together to make it. So I was a senior in high school and was working on the weekends to put as much money aside as I could. After all, college years were coming and my little sister was about to start high school. Some of my classmates knew about our family and some even knew I was working at Starbucks to make ends meet. I didn't mind that as long as we wouldn't get bullied because of it. Some kids were mean calling me a weirdo or making fun of my cheaper clothes, but it was a completely unexpected place that the real meanness was hiding. One of my classmates, Hillary, was a pretty good friend of mine. She came from a much richer family and she was used to very upper class activities, going horse riding on the Saturdays I'd be working at Starbucks, but she always showed empathy and a total lack of judgment towards my situation and I appreciated that in her. She wouldn't brag about her background and she would often invite me and my sister to her place. So it was a win-win. At least until I found out what she was really like. She would often hang out with us in the evenings and I suppose she was just getting all the validation from us who were always fascinated by her home and grateful for her generosity. But that month, my sister caught a nasty virus and she was homesick for about two weeks. Obviously, I stayed with her whenever I wasn't at school or working. As I tended to my sister, I distanced myself from Hillary a little. I had no idea just how upset she would get over this. After a few invitations which I turned down, the passive aggressive text started. Oh, I guess you just suddenly forgot about all the things I've done for you, she would write. Or, oh sorry, I didn't realize you never liked my amazing house. What kind of person was she? I would have never become friends with her if I knew this was her view of our friendship. But now it was too late. I just ignored her arrogant texts and hoped that the atmosphere would just die out. But she didn't feel the same way. So on that late November Sunday morning, Hillary decided to visit me at the Starbucks. An unexpected thing for her who would usually hang out in much fancier places during the weekends. Silly as I was, I thought that maybe this was a nice thing, that she had come to apologize for her behavior. And for a moment, she had me believe it. She came up to me with a friendly smile on her face, asking me about my day, like nothing had happened. I replied and let the conversation flow as I waited for her to address those creepy texts. She then ordered two drinks, one for her and one for me. I thought, cool, that's her way of saying sorry. I'll take that. I made the drinks and put them on the counter without lids on as I figured we'd just drink them and talk. I turned my back to her to clean the mess I'd left behind, and I heard my work colleague ask Hillary, what's that you got there? I immediately turned toward her and saw her opening a little sachet containing some sort of powder. Hillary? I asked and waited for an explanation. She just mumbled, I, ah. Then she just dropped the sachet and left the Starbucks as fast as she could. 
I looked back at my work colleague, half thankful, half confused. What had just happened? Was this really my friend? It really didn't take that much to show her true side. I honestly can't believe I was friends with her for so long and that I didn't sense her narcissism or her sense of arrogance towards my sister and I. I'm just glad I didn't end up drinking whatever she had in store for me. Well, lesson learned. My advice to you when someone offers you way more than seems normal, be on the lookout. Take care of yourselves out there.